All right. Uh, yesterday was another day on the road. Let me kind of give you my thoughts on fleshing out the car business, car rental business. I went out, I looked at locations for a dealership. Um, more than likely, I am not going to start off with a dealership. And I'm going to give you the following reasons. First of all, I got to hire people. So essentially, if I don't want to be there all the time, I got to hire people. So I'm going to have the cost of employees. I'm going to have the cost of the dealership. And then there is the uh, build out of the spot, which could be twenty, thirty thousand dollars from signage to stuff like that. So essentially, um, I'm not going to go that route. This is the route that I'm going to go. I'm going to get the cheapest office possible to get my dealer's license. That's going to be the first route. Um, maybe 1200 bucks a month, maybe a thousand, maybe 500 bucks a month, uh, whatever I can get the cheapest office I can rent because essentially I'm never going to be there. It's just to get my dealer's license. Um, then what I'm going to do the first year is focus on the car rental business because that is consistent cash flow. So. And with that, like um, one of the things that I've been doing is checking out insurance. Insurance is very interesting. Like I will go in commercial insurance, go online, put in a quote, <laughs> tell them what I'm trying to do. And they will say, uh, we don't have a product for you essentially the purposes that what I'm trying to do, um, they will not insure. So essentially before I start buying cars, I've got to figure out this insurance thing because if I title the car in the name of Mac daddy autos, that's going to denote a commercial purpose. And if I could title it in Mac daddy autos and I can title it in my name, but then when I go to sell it, it gets weird. Um, fun story. When I bought my 2012 X five M, the guy titled it in my company name and my name. And when I sold it to Turo, I had to like sign twice. So, you know, when you multiply this over a bunch of cars selling it, this could become a hassle. So essentially, what I'm probably going to end up doing is titling the car in my name and just getting a regular liability insurance policy because essentially I got to have insurance to drive the car on the road. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the path of least resistance um, today. I'm going to do some more research on insurance. But um, from the four sites I hit, it, it doesn't seem to be going, which is why Turo, hire a car, get around. I think this is, you know, the insurance alone is worth renting your car on these sites because essentially uh, I've seen many videos where if your car is totaled, their insurance will cover you. And because they're a corporation, and they've got custom insurance for these things. So starting a car rental agency on your own could be very, very daunting, very daunting because you've got to look around for insurance. And like I said, I'm going to do some more research because this whole plan is starting to shape up. Um, not going I'm going to continue to look for a dealership because when I get my cash flow up to let's say I want to be making 100,000 a month from car rentals before I get into a dealership. And the reason is simple because I won't 
feel that hit. Because right now, if I was to go out, get a dealership and start buying some cars, I would literally be burning through money. I mean, 150,000 sounds like a lot of money, but let's go ahead and do the calculations. So one place I looked at, don't know what the rent is, and the rent can get you. The rent can be really, really uh, shocking. So, and you know, it's a, it's a good location because it's on a corner, but it only can, I only can have 50 cars there. Only 50. <clears throat> so, that's kind of a problem because I know the rent's going to be, I'm going to say, I'm going to call them. I'm going to do my due diligence because let's say this property is still available when I'm ready to get the lot. So this is one of the things I'm going to do. I'm just going to make it a habit of consistently being on the lookout for lots and stuff. But um, let's say it's 8,000. Okay. And I've rented this a spot, so I would ask for free rent for like six months. May get it, may not. So let's say to get it, the building painted, to get signage, let's say 25,000. I only got 150. So boom, that's a big nut. And then let's say the rent's 8,000. I'm going to have to do 16,000. So that is 25, 30, that's 41,000 just between acquiring the property, getting the signage, and I haven't even bought any cars yet. I haven't even bought any cars yet. And let's say I spend 41 and that gives me 11, so I can buy 11 cars. So I gotta flip those 11 cars during that six month period into about 50. So I gotta buy, flip, buy, flip, buy, flip. Um, I don't really know, you know, like I said, you know, one of the things with this channel, I know nothing about the car business, but I do know business. And I know, because I remember at uh, the pre-licensing, um, they were talking about people were in the car business as well, and they were out of the business. And I think this is what people do. They'll go out and acquire a building and immediately start burning through cash, immediately. And when you're burning through, because essentially, let's go ahead and say I spend 41,000 to get this property. And then I somehow managed to flip these 11 cars to 50. But one of the things I've been doing is I'll go to a dealer's lot and I'll see what they're selling the car for. And then I'll go to Kelly Blue Book and look at private, private party pricing and like uh, I know someone who has a BMW uh, M3 for sale he's got it for sale for 23,000 so he's paid 15 to 17 thousand dollars estimate I don't know until I start getting into auctions but he paid 15 to 17 thousand dollars for that car so let's say he paid 17 and he sells it he makes a six thousand dollar profit um, you know, let's say, you know, he sold 50 cars. So six, 50 times 6,000 is 300 K. Now let's say, let's take my 11 cars. So I buy 10, uh, 11, $10,000 cars and I have a profit margin of 2000. So I sell all 11 cars and I've made $22,000. So now I can go out and buy 13 cars. And let's say it takes me a month to sell those cars. So now I have 13 cars, then I sell those, and I make a $2,000 profit on each one. 
So that's 26,000. So now I can buy um, 15 cars, 15, $10,000 cars. This is the third month, right? So now I've got 15 and made $2,000 off each car, 30,000. Now I can buy 18 cars. This is the fourth month. And then the fifth month, uh, I make profit of like 40, let's say two times 18, 2000 times 18 <clears throat> is 36. So now I can buy um, 36,000 plus. So now I can buy 20 cars. This is month five. So I do 20 and I do 40 and I can now buy 22 cars. And now I made a profit of um, 44,000. Month six, now I've got, um, I can buy like 30 cars. So I got 30 cars, month six. So the 30 cars, $2,000 profit, $60,000. Um, now I can buy 35 cars, but next month I got to pay $8,000 in rent. So let's say I get up to, I buy, um, make 60, so I'm buying 40 cars, right? And then I sell those 40 cars, make $80,000 profit, and now I got to pull 8,000 out of that 80,000, which means I can only buy maybe 45 cars, maybe 40 cars. So essentially that's really is dependent and is hinged on a lot of what ifs. And that's if I get in the spot, if I get it in there and all of my numbers are correct, because once again, I have no clue if my numbers are correct. Uh, the build out could be more. And with COVID, I don't really know, you know, getting contractors, getting people to do stuff. So um, that I don't really know now. Uh, let's talk about my rental car, my rental car business. I've watched tons and tons of videos and like once I get started, it seems the absolute worst is $500 per car. Let's start with that. And so if I've got 40 cars and I'm making $500 per car, that's 20,000 a month. And I don't have, um, I can, and let's say I rent an office for 500 bucks a month, 500 to get my dealer's license. So I have 40 cars, really low numbers, $500 a month, right? That's 20,000 per month. So first month I do 20,000. I go out and buy four or $5,000 cars. So now I have 44 cars. So in six months, I will be up to about 60 cars and 60 times 500 is 30,000 a month. And I don't have an $8,000 uh, car lot rent or 10,000 or 15,000. I don't have that. So in a year, I can scale a car rental business up to a hundred thousand per month, or maybe yeah, let's let's say a year, because you know, um, then I would be in a better position because essentially this is my business model. I'm going to buy the car, pay cash, and um, I'm finding you know once you get into the marketplace, you you. you you go into the marketplace with some assumptions. And I went into the marketplace with the assumption that I could find 
$5,000 cars. And I can find $5,000 cars. But here's the problem with $5,000 car. $5,000 car, they're gonna have 160, 180, 200,000 miles on them. And then I rent them to a ride share uh, person who's gonna put like 20, 30, maybe 40,000 miles on that car. So the car is going to be beat the crap and it's going to be hard to sell that. Um, well, it wouldn't be hard in the buy here, pay here situation because these people uh, don't have a lot of options, but that business model has a lot of problems because the cars are going to be trashed. So essentially I may have to move up to $10,000 per car. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing is buying 20 $10,000 cars and 20 $5,000 cars. Cause essentially I have no clue to how this is going to work. I have no clue until I actually get started and getting started is a challenge, but the, the simplest way is to buy a car in my name and then get insurance. I'll build the insurance in my name. And essentially, I don't know what is the number of policies you can have. Uh, I may have to have four or five different insurance companies because as I get into this, I'm finding out there are limits. So I don't know if State Farm has a limit to how many cars you can have on a policy. I have no clue. And I wouldn't use State Farm. I use State Farm for my, my Porsche and BMW because I have additional riders because I have additional stuff on there. So if I have a loss, I'm going to get a big check but I might go with the general. I might go with, um, it's definitely gonna be a cheaper auto insurance. I'm gonna go with the cheapest auto insurance because essentially I, I plan on never to use that. I just have to have it by law so I can drive this vehicle on the road because, um, so I'm gonna go with that. And once again, I'll be here talking to this because what like I'll give you a good example like I wanted to transfer a hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars to Wells Fargo and I already know that if I wrote a hundred and fifty thousand dollar check they were gonna put a hold on it for a week I already know this and so what I did is I wrote a check from my personal checking account to my business checking account and then I tried to transfer $150,000 to my Wells Fargo account. Nope. I can only do 25,000 at a time. So essentially I went to Chase. I took out 25,000 cash and then I deposited that into my Wells Fargo uh, Mac Daddy Auto account put that in there and then um i've got a hundred thousand in, in the wells fargo account so two more days i'll be able to get the 150 in there or i may go to wells fargo write another check for 25 and deposit the cash in there i don't know i don't know but um essentially I want to start buying cars next week and I'm going to have to buy cars Monday through Friday. And this is why, um, well, let's, if I have the cash on me, I can buy a car on the weekend. So essentially Tuesday, I'm going to start buying cars because I got to get this thing started. Um, and essentially, I've kind of figured out a spot while I'm looking for a spot to rent that's going to be approved for an automobile brokerage. Um, there are some office buildings not too far with massive parking lots. So 
I can kind of park cars there for a minute and I'm going to call them and see how much it is to um, rent out an office building there, uh, how much that costs. So I'm going to get this thing started from my house and I could probably do 20 cars from the house. 40 cars, if they're out, if they're consistently out, because um, essentially I may have to rent my old office space because plenty of parking there. I could literally, you know, it, it's the whole problem is with the city of Sandy Springs, are they going to approve the business license? That's the issue. That That's the big issue. Um, because essentially, you know, I know how to do like when I was doing um, garage sales out of my warehouse, I wasn't supposed to do that. I did that for years. So I kind of know how to get around some stuff. And it's just a matter of, you know, I got to get information. And one of the most frustrating things is I want to go, 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 go. However, if I just start doing stuff and I don't really get my information to grab, like essentially I'm playing phone tag with the city of Sandy Springs zoning person. I, I want to get this person on the phone, ask them questions. So um, essentially I am setting up a schedule, but I'm going to start because, you know, if, if I get 20 cars, right? My goal is to get 40 cars in the month of May. So my first month of June, I can have 40 cars and I'm renting them out, right? So May is going to be busy, 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 really, really busy. Um, but one of the things I got to do is I got to put a tracker on the car. So that's an additional expense. Uh, one I found on Amazon is like 80 bucks. And I'm gonna put a kill switch on there. Tracker and kill switch. So if someone like has my car and they're not paying, I turn that bad boy off, take my second set of keys, go pick up my car. And, you know, essentially, uh, I knew, th this is so funny. Um, I knew of a place that did these services and the other day I was out there and guess what? <laughs> the, it's the building, the, 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 the mechanic shop has been torn down and they're building a Chase Bank on that property. And I know why Chase chose it because it's on the corner. So I'm like, all right, so I gotta get me a mechanic to install these trackers, get the car, I really want to buy from private owners. And th this is something else too. Most of the ads on Craigslist are from dealers. They're not from private owners. Cause I go buy from private owners, take that title, go get a tag, boom. I can do that the next day, right? Well, as a dealer, I gotta wait 30 days to get a tag. And essentially I got this car out there with the drive out tag on it. So then I'm gonna to have to communicate with whoever has it to come back in to put the tag on it. You know, it's little, it's little things like that because essentially, um, I, I, I'm, I'm essentially, I'm gonna to have to break it down where I'm gonna do like 10 car searches a day. So 10 car searches a day is 50 cars a week, um, 200 cars a month. So I should be able to get my 40 cars by in May because I really want to start off June with 40 cars in a rentable position and there's something else too um, if your car has recalls on it because essentially when I look at the car I have to look at it for sale then go to Kelly Blue Book and then I got to do uh, some researches to make sure that this car has had all this recalls fixed because essentially, let's say I get a car on Monday 
And also, for a higher car, I gotta get the car inspected for Uber and Lyft drivers. So, I buy a car on Monday, I get the tracker installed, I get the inspection, if there's recall issues. So we're looking at three to five days before this car can even be in service. So my goal is to buy three, four, five, six cars at once and put them through that whole process and then put them on the platform. And one of the things that I have come to understand is that Turo is not the place for budget friendly cars. It's not the place. So let's go ahead and say I buy $10,000, 20 $10,000 cars, which is 200K. And then I take another um, 20 cars, take another 100K, which is 300K. So we're past the 150, but stick with me because I see a lot of profit with this. So I take 200K, get 10, 20, um, $10,000 cars. And then I take another 100K and get 20, $5,000 cars. And I run both business models to see which is best because essentially my low number is 20,000 a month with 40 cars. After expenses and everything is 20,000. My high number with 40 cars it's 50,000. So let's say June is a good month. I hit my high numbers. I make $50,000 from 40 cars. So I got to pay my insurance out of that 50,000. So 40, it's going to be like $80. I'm estimating, I don't know, $80 a car. Uh, there's this thing on Snapchat where you can get insurance for 40 bucks a car. So if I can get 40, you know, I, I'm going to go for that. Um, but let's just go ahead and say $50 a car, $2,000 a month. After all expenses, I make 50,000. So that's going to be minus insurance. It's going to be um, 48,000. What I would do is go out and buy five more cars. And one of the things I would do since it's going to be such a process, because uh, one of my thoughts was to get all the money and go buy the cars. I'm not doing that. As the money comes in, I'll be buying cars because this will increase my profits per month quicker. Because let's say um, the first week I do 10,000. Boom, go out and buy a $10,000 car, put it on the platform. That's three weeks that that car will be earning money. And then next week, make 10,000, boom, go out and buy another car. The car's gonna be making money for two weeks. And then the third week, 10,000, boom, car's gonna be making money for a week. So essentially, it will behoove me as the money comes in to buy cars. So by the end of July, I'll start July off with 45 cars, okay? And then, let's say I make 60,000 in July. Same thing, so July, I end the month of July with uh, 50 cars. So in August, I will have 48 cars. And then September, I would have um, 55 cars. So let's say we do 55 and let's say I'm hitting my high numbers. That's going to be because, you know, I've been doing a lot of research because if I can average 1400 a month per car times 55, it's like 70,000. So September, I would buy six more cars. So that would put me at 61 cars. 
then October I'll be at almost 70 cars November let's say 75 cars December like I got 75 cars November I do 80,000 so then I would take that 80,000 and buy eight cars eight ten thousand dollar cars because you know based upon my research and anything so that would put me at 84 cars in November and then by January I could be at 100 cars and at 100 cars that's going to be 100k a month right I would keep going I would buy cars in um, January and I would buy cars in February then we would move into tax season right I would chill because let's say February ends up I have 120 cars right so that's gonna be about a hundred you know uh, let's say 120 cars on the low side well actually if I don't hit my high numbers I won't be able to get 120 cars so let's say I had 70 cars in February let's say on the low side so 500 times 70 is 35,000 all right and on the high side if I had 140 cars that would be like 120 I would sit tax season out and I'm gonna tell you why because essentially I want these cars to pay for themselves so it's gonna take roughly 10 months for the cars to pay for themselves the ten thousand dollar cars to pay for themselves so I would sit out tax season because if I, I would go to auctions and stuff if I can get a deal I would get a deal but if I can't get a deal I would just sit out tax season for three months and just rent so that's going to allow me to stack up 300k in my business account and then uh, after tax season I would start to put the ten thousand dollar cars and the five thousand you know the first 40 which uh, that's this is why I want to do this in June so next June I could put those 40 cars on the lot as buy here, pay here. And then I got $300,000. I can go out and buy 30 $10,000 cars and then rent them out. And then put them on the platform for a year, then sell them. So essentially, um, based upon my numbers, if I sell 40 cars, $2,000 down, that's 80,000. And then I pull 40, and I still have my 100 for rent. I want to keep 100 for rent, because 100 for rent is 100,000. So that's going to give me 180. Um, so essentially, I can buy 18, possibly 20 more $10,000 cars, rent them out. And just do that you know once again I get to that limit of where I can sell 30 cars a month at a buy here pay here um, then that's gonna be two thousand dollars down it's gonna be sixty thousand dollars a month there and what happens is as I get the payment so let's say I've got 30 cars 350 per car that's going to be almost ten thousand dollars in payments so let's go ahead and say we start this in june by december i'll be at sixty thousand dollars in payments so i'll have my hundred cars for rent that's that's the the, the goal to keep 100 cars in rent so then i sell 30 30 cars sixty thousand 120,000 in sales and payments. And then let's go to year two. Year two, I would have 
30 cars a month, 300 cars times 350, that's going to be, because every, every 100 cars at 350 is 35,000. So 100 cars, that's 95,000. We have 100,000 rental income coming in, and then we have sales. Then we have sales. So that's 260,000 per month. And once we get to that spot, I probably, I probably will do it like this. Um, I will pay myself 30, because 30, I mean, I could do whatever I want on 30. I could buy million dollar houses. I can do whatever I want on 30,000 per month. So I keep my, my salary at 30,000 per month. And then what I would do is start putting money in my dividend account and then take that out as a dividend and only pay 15%. So essentially I could pay myself 30, take 30, put it in my dividend account and every quarter pull out 120, only pay 15%. So 15% on 120 would be about seven, like 15% on 100 would be 15,000. Um, 10%, so we're about 18,000. So every three months, I'll have $100,000 to add to my pay. So it's gonna be 400,000 plus the 200,000. So that's gonna be $600,000 a year that I'll be able to pay myself once I get this thing built and in play. And it's just a matter of building the business. And it'll take me about 18 months, 19 months to get there. And once I have these 100 cars in rental rotation, then like the three year mark, I could start to move to $20,000 cars, which then I can start to bring in banks and I, I, can, I can do so much more. I can do so much more. And essentially I would be, cause I, I have a lot of options because at that point, then I can bring in a partner and start putting Mercedes, Teslas and stuff on Toro. Essentially, the whole methodology of this is to build cash flow before I start spending money on rent. Because essentially, I'm not going to get a dealership lot or location until I'm doing six figures from the rental business. So that's going to keep me from being desperate. And that's going to keep me, because I remember, the lady at the pre-licensing seminar, she said it, a lot of people get in the business, a lot of people go out the business. And once again, when you look at how much money you have to invest into a physical spot, and then the insurance and the overhead, whereas literally I can rent out 40 cars from my house because I've, I've concocted a plan. Um, essentially, even if I can't get my dealer's license at this location, I'm probably going to still rent a very small office because I know they have an office there that I can rent for 500 and just to have access, I mean, it'll be like renting a parking lot for 500 bucks a month. So I'm probably going to go over there and do that. And, you know, I should be able to get my broker's license because it's not a car lot so we will see um get that going and essentially it's going to take me some time to get the dealer thing set up so i'm probably going to buy these 40 cars out in the streets before i actually get access to the dealer's auctions because if i was to wait um Essentially, I will miss my 
target of June. Because essentially, if I can get this thing started in June, and let's say with the $5,000 cars, once I've made my money back renting the $5,000 cars, sell them, buy here, pay here. So that could start earlier. And that could start way earlier. So that's kind of the plan. And I'll be documenting, but like insurance, I already see insurance is a big, big issue. Now, having insurance for a car lot is totally different than having insurance for a rental car business. Rental car business, you're gonna have claims, man. That's why they don't wanna do it, because they know, because a progressive was like, we ain't doing that. So, I got a lot of research to do, but the goal is, since I know it's gonna take a few days to get the cars into the system, um, like starting Tuesday, uh, my plan is to go out and buy a car. And also buying for private owners. One of the big issues with that is they want to meet in the evening because they got jobs and stuff. So we will see. Um, but my goal is to buy three and four or five cars at once because it's going to take some time to get them into the system. Um, that's because essentially, you know, the floor is five hundred car, five hundred dollars per car. So forty cars is twenty thousand per month, minus two thousand for insurance. So it's like eighteen thousand. That's not really bad income to build in six weeks. It's not bad at all, because that would be, and l let's just say I stopped there. I spent this 40,000, I spent the, uh, like 200K, spent, no, 300K, I spent 300K, and I made 20,000 a month. So in 12 months, that's 140,000 a month. So in two years, I will have my 300,000 back. And at that point, the cars are like cash cows. So I'm making like $18,000 a month just managing that. And I already know, because I already have an assistant, so I already know that once we get into this, there's gonna be a lot to it. And I'm gonna set it up where I'm gonna rent cars Monday through Friday. I've already seen how this works. So, and that's a whole nother thing with the dealership. Um, that's why I want to start with this business model first, because I don't want to be at a dealership every Saturday. You know, like two Saturdays out the month, I can do that, you know, but hire someone, get them trained, get this, this set up correctly, where I don't have to be at the dealership on Saturdays. Because the way I want to build this is, because essentially in two years, if I'm making 300, 400K a month, um, that's a lot of cars. And this is without banks. Because uh, one of the things I've checked on this is like getting banks to buy your paper. Like someone comes in, they get a loan, and the, they take the title, and the bank holds the title. Um, there's a process with that. There is a process with that. So essentially, I can run the next two years off of cash. Easy, easy. Because one of the things is, I'm gonna keep my expenses low as I can. And that's one of the reasons, like I'll be out looking for a lot. I have a, a vision for the future, but we're not going to do a car lot right off the rift. Um, that's just going to consume so much money. And, you know, I don't want to, um, pull money from disruptive assets. Like I'm willing to go, I got the 150 
and I could just take my paycheck every month and invest it in this business, which would be three cars, three ten thousand dollar cars. So I could buy three ten thousand dollar cars out of my salary, and then so seven. Because the let, let, let's go ahead and go. We got forty cars, and we hit our numbers and we do 40,000. So that's seven cars in July. That will be eight cars in August, September, 10 cars, October, 12 cars, November, 14 cars, December 15 cars. So I could be at 20 cars by February. And this is $10,000 cars. Because essentially I found some deals because when you when you move it up a little bit, I found a car with 105,000 miles because let's say I rent it out and they put 30,000 miles on it and it started off with 105. It only has 135. I can sell that because that's something I have to be worth. Because like all these five thousand dollar cars, 180, 200, 250 thousand miles. That that's you start to at 250, 300 thousand miles. You're gonna run into some problems, and I want to sell cars that are reliable that will give people the comfort, the ability, you know, dependability, because um, I'm pretty much gonna buy Hondas and Toyotas off the rift. Uh, no Mercedes, no BMWs. I already know, like my X5, it had like 76,000 miles on it. And I had some issues with that and it cost me like 3,500. So no BMWs. And now when I get to the point where I want to sell these cars and I've been doing a lot of research, I'm seeing buy here, pay here. It's like you put 7,000, you put 8,000, you put $10,000 down. Um, so as we go on this journey, uh, you know, but essentially the car rental business is the primary focus. And I might, after, once I get my 40 cars, that, that's, that's a big number, I wanna get that 40 cars, I may buy one car and just flip it. Flip this one car, take that money, buy another car, flip it, and keep doing that on the side, because essentially, from a dollar and cent standpoint, this car rental business is, can be extremely profitable and lucrative, because let's say, once I got up to 100 cars, right? And I was making 100 k a month. And I had to pay like $10,000 a month in insurance. So that left me 90 k a month. Once I hit that level, I'm at a million dollar a year business, 1.2 million a year business in less than a year. Just off the car rental business. Just off the car rental business. That's why I'm pushing so hard to get to these 100 cars. Because once I, once I get to 100 cars, I'm going to make, you know, 500, like, let, let, let's just say, um, I somehow managed to get to 100 cars, making 500. $500 per car is, so it's 50,000 a month. Minus 10, that's 40,000. $40,000 a month? I mean, I pay myself $30,000. I don't even spend all that. So $40,000. And this is something I can do starting in June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. I can do this in nine months. 
build a million dollar business from scratch in nine months. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I'll be documenting the uh, journey here and we will see. We will see because if I do that, the, the returns will far exceed anything I can get. Like if I took that 300,000 and I invested it in crypto, which will get me six Bitcoins, right? I guarantee you in, in, in nine months, I got reoccurring revenue after expenses of 90,000 per month. That's baller money, man. That's baller money. Because after expenses, and this is something that I can run from a little rinky dink office. I don't need a car lot. Essentially, uh, I gotta go over here and talk to these people because I, I feel that I'll be able to get my automotive broker's license there because it's not a car lot. Um, yeah, I can park cars there and everything. And essentially, once I get up to 100K a month, then I'm gonna be looking for a spot because like I have a vision. I wanna have a, a shop where I can do, you know, because at this point, I can start to buy damaged cars, put me a little crew together to work on cars, you know, because essentially, I don't want to go in and start spending a lot of cash without cash flow, you know? So, that's all I got for you guys. If you want to become a corporate citizen, link is below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Oh.